Hello, I'm Arlene Herson, and I'm glad you could join me today because my guest is a woman who has done what many would have thought the impossible. With absolutely no publishing experience, she started a magazine with a totally new concept for the woman over 40, the woman, she says, who wasn't born yesterday. Armed with guts, talent, money, imagination, and determination, Frances Lear had a dream a magazine that would take women over 40 seriously. Not only has her dream come true with the magazine that bears her name, Lear's, which has surpassed even her expectations, she has given other women the hope that their dreams can come true also. My guest is Frances Lear, founder and editor-in-chief of Lear's magazine. We'll meet her right after these messages, so please stay right there. I'm Arlene Herson, and we're here with my very special guest, Frances Lear, in her office of Lear's Magazine on Park Avenue. And I thank you very much for having us here in your office. Thank you very much for coming. You know, here we are, as I mentioned, in Lear's, uh, the magazine that you started, the magazine that bears your name, a whole totally new concept. As I said in the introduction, you really have done the impossible. You have a magazine geared toward the women over 40, women who were previously the forgotten women, people didn't want to admit that they were over 40. You had an idea for a magazine for these women and you made it succeed. What gave you the idea? Well, I think it's because I needed a magazine for myself and there wasn't one. I really was very tired of going to the newsstand before I would take get on a plane and see a row of perfect young faces on every magazine cover and uh, nothing for me except, of course, the news magazines or special interest magazines. But there wasn't a magazine for a woman at my time of life with a woman's face that I could identify with, that materi with material in it that was relevant to my life. Uh, I think that the need is what made me create the magazine. And the fact that there were uh, so many women of my age all over the country uh, who were uh, obviously needing product because there were so many more women going into their 40s because of the, the uh, baby boomers. Uh, there were many things that we needed, and among them, of course, it seemed to me reasonable that the first thing would be media. We were absent from the media and had been for decades. You know, actually, it's interesting because this is the right time. I mean, you have come up with this idea that really is brand new. But look at people like Gloria Steinem. Look at people like Jane Fonda. Look at people like Frances Lear who admit they're over 40 and not only are doing terrific things, but will continue to do wonderful things. But the people that you had to convince, I mean, you've convinced me, you've convinced your readers. The people you had to convince were the advertisers. Lear started their first issue, I believe, with 77 pages of advertising. Easy, double the norm. How did you get those people to believe in you, to actually advertise in the magazine? Well, there are several ways, I think. One, of course, were demographics, the fact that there were more women over 40. Secondly, there are a great many women over 40 who work in advertising agencies, who work uh, in cosmetic firms and fashion houses. Uh, who say, uh, hey, by the way, we do buy cars, we do buy ca cosmetics, stop overlooking us. I believe that I have an army of salespeople out there whose names I don't know who are uh, seeing to it that uh, their companies advertise in Lear's. I owe them a great debt. <laughs> Good. Well, the magazine looks beautiful. The advertising is growing. It's far beyond even your expectations right now. The name of the magazine, for those who may not have seen it on the newsstands, who I hope will look for it if they haven't. The name is Lear's. Now, it's your name. Lots of other names came up, I understand, sequel or various things to, to you know, but you decided on Lear's. Why? Because there was no word that described us. Uh, we weren't mature, uh, because I think mature has a gray, dark side of it. Uh, we weren't anything really that we're used to be, uh, that people call us normally, routinely. Uh, we weren't graying. We weren't doing any of the things that people had t were telling us that we were doing. We were doing something else that was new, that this magazine had to represent. And I couldn't think of another word, a word that meant nothing that would someday mean this woman. 
You know, actually, the name is perfect because it's not only a magazine, it is a woman, and it is you, and it does say so much. Now, Lear's does have a meaning. I mean, it, it Lear's means, hey, we can be terrific at any age that we are. But your whole life has changed in a very short period of time. You have come to New York where you're living now. You lived in California for a long time. Now, I read that you said that women are treated completely different in California. I mean, you are really making it here. What was so different about the attitude of women in California and your life? Well, you know, <coughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me, Los Angeles is a show business town. It's a company town. And uh, even men aren't uh, paid much attention to unless they can hand out jobs. Uh, women certainly can't hand out jobs out there, with the exception of very few. If you're a star, that also uh, brings attention. But if you're somebody's wife, if you're just nobody, you are really nobody. Uh, I think that that's not true in other uh, industries. Uh, there's a great uh, financial industry out there, and aerospace and so on. I don't think that's, it's that true. But in show business, it is true. And that was very hard on me. You know, it's very interesting because when you say if you're not a star, you are a star now. You are a star here in New York City. Uh, you are a star with Lears. But when you were living in California, you were married to a star. You were married at that time to Norman Lear, who is one of the biggest and best known and producers in, in Hollywood. Was it tough being the wife of the star? I don't think I'm a star here. I just think I have a wonderful magazine. I, stardom is something else. Stardom is when everybody knows who you are and everybody cares what you do. There are a limited number of people who care about what I do because I, uh, I make a, a good product that they enjoy and that they identify with. Okay, but you, you were married to a star and I do want to pick up on that. We're going to take a break right now. And I disagree with you because you're a star to me. You're doing a lot of terrific things out there and you're an inspiration. We're going to take a break and then uh, we'll come back and talk some more. We're speaking with Frances Lear. We're in her office on Park Avenue in New York City. We'll be right back after these messages. I'm Arlene Herson. We're back with Frances Lear at Lear's Magazine in her office in New York City. Uh, we mentioned just before the break, and actually we were talking during the break, uh, there's no secret that you were married to Norman Lear, who was an, is an enormously successful producer. Uh, there's also no secret that you are very successful here on your own. Uh, we were talking no marriage breaks up unless, I know you don't want to get into the details, but a marriage doesn't break up if it's a happy marriage. So obviously things happen that you felt that you needed this marriage to end. But the reason, actually, that I think you are so much of an inspiration, and for women out there, some women who are in bad marriages, who are afraid to get out of the bad marriages because they feel they'll never be able to do something on their own. I mean, you got out of a marriage, you came to New York, and you did it yourself. Don't you think that makes you an inspiration and gives other women courage, perhaps, if they are in marriages that they're afraid to end because they think they'll never be able to support themselves? Well, one must be very careful thinking about these things. They're enormous questions. And uh, I didn't leave California and come to New York without paying a huge price. And also, I had something else going for me. I have been working since I was 17 years old. I left home when I was a, a teenager and uh, supported myself for 17 years before I married uh, Norman. I have a tremendous uh, work background, very varied. I've been publishing before uh, in book publishing, uh, advertising, many uh, fields which are, have something to do with magazine publishing. But I know a great deal about work. And during the 25 years that I was in California, I worked with women who work. I created work programs for uh, welfare mothers and started my own business in an executive search firm so that I have a work background. Now, because of that, I think, the magazine uh, happened. If I hadn't, I think I would have uh, 
folded my tent and crept away maybe after a couple of months. But I understood what one has to put into a project in order to make it successful. I think really that uh, what, I th what is most important for me uh, as, a, as perhaps a woman that other women look to uh, is to uh, caution to say that one must be very realistic about life. What can I really do on my own? Do I have the experience? Do I have the commitment? There's a tremendous amount of commitment that's needed. Uh, it is quite different, you know, when you are out there alone at our age and uh, all of a sudden, and all your structure is gone, you, your marriage, your family, your, your social life, uh, everything you do every day. It is a, a huge uh, change, and, uh, and it's hard. And I want to say that. It is hard. If you make it, it's terrific, however. I've never been happier in my life. You know, that's true, and I've heard you say that before, that these have been the best years of your life now. But you have, you bring with you all your life experience. Uh, you had, there was one point when you were a mother staying home with the children, and at that time you said you loved being a mother, and you were a wonderful cook and a wonderful wife and a wonderful mother, and that time was right for you then. And that was happy then. So we go through different stages of our life when we need different things. But your background is so unusual, actually. You know, aside from all the experience that you're bringing into this magazine, you were, I, I understand, orphaned as a child and adopted by a family, brought up in Larchmont, New York. But that wasn't, I mean, everybody says, you know, adoption and that's going to be wonderful. But I understand that that wasn't in the beginning all peaches and cream and white picket fence in, in this suburban town. Well, you see, I grew up during the Depression. and. Uh that meant more probably than being adopted, <clears throat> although I'm not really sure. <laughs> They're kind of nip and tuck. Um, my father committed suicide when I was 11 uh, because he lost his business, he lost his home, he lost everything. And uh, I think the, the fact that my mother and I were not always uh, compatible and that I lost my father did make my childhood difficult. But you see, I think that's all quite wonderful because uh, everything that happened to me, whatever it was, uh, brought me to this moment, and I would never change this moment for anything. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think that that, uh, that makes us stronger when everything isn't quite handed to us. You mentioned earlier, at 17, you came to New York. You did. You left home. You came to New York. You were single. How did you support yourself? I started as a sales girl for twenty two fifty a week. <laughs> <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I moved in with two other girls that I knew. And, uh, of course, we called them girls in those days. We called them young women today. And one of them made twenty dollars, and the other one made twenty-one fifty, and I was the highest paid. <gasps> okay. We shared one good dress, and uh, all the food that one of us could bring from home on the weekends. You know, it's funny when you talk about that. You have a big smile on your face. I mean, obviously, those were it made sound difficult to people shared a dress and and the management. But obviously, you look back on that as a very good time. Uh, I think it was a wonderful time because. Uh, it was, uh, uh, there we were against everything, you know, just the three of us, um, alone and really unskilled. We didn't know anything. I had a high school education. They both had college degrees. And here we were about to make our way. In those days, it was hard if you were a young woman. There were very few jobs except selling or, or something totally uh, underpaid and uh, unsatisfying. Well, you know, now it's different. You're a single woman here in New York City. Now, a whole different way. There you had to worry about sharing a dress and supporting yourself 22 50 a week. Now you'll never have to worry really about money again. Uh, what's it like to be single at this point in your life? Well, it's very interesting because um, after being married most of my life, uh, I, uh, I'm enjoying a whole new way of life. I have uh, more than one uh, male friend, uh, and I hope to have more. And uh, age doesn't seem to, in any way, cramp my style. It perhaps has made me more interesting, more attractive. I'm not sure. I certainly love men more now than I used to. So uh, I'm having a wonderful time. Now, I know that it would be better if there were many more men available. I'm not uh, suggesting that it is uh, very easy to find these wonderful people. But I find them. You know, Sooner or later, I find them. And, uh, and I rather like. Uh, variety now. And at this time in your life, it's wonderful and you can probably appreciate the variety more. 
and uh, an inspiration, as I say, again, for those people out there who are single, uh, who want to start their life over again, you're doing it. We're going to take a break, and we're going to talk some more about this incredible magazine from this incredible lady, Frances Lear. We're speaking with Frances Lear. We'll be right back after these messages. Please stay right there. I'm Arlene Hurston, and we're back with Francis Lear here at Lear's Magazine in New York City. Um, we are in New York City, but your magazine is a national magazine all over the country. And inspiration, I know I keep saying that, and I really don't want to be too flowery, but I have to tell you, I love the magazine. It makes me feel good about myself. It makes other women feel good about ourselves. Now, you had the concept. I have the very first issue of Lear's magazine. This is the very, very first one. The cover happens to be a very good friend of mine, Mary Weir, um, who actually is the person who introduced us, but, and absolutely, I mean, how did you feel? This is the idea when this magazine actually was there on the stands and you could see that Lear's was a reality. I, it's hard for me to describe it. It's as if, um, as if the top of my head came off and I connected to the universe. I don't know how else to... It was the highest high. And uh, it also was uh, impossible, you know? I thought I would never get it to the printer. I thought it would never come together because magazines are so complicated. But there it was, very beautiful. People talked about it a lot. People comp complimented us on the job that we had done. By the way, I must tell you, you know, Magazines are done by many people, and every single part of a magazine is integral to everything else, and every person is integral to its success. I have wonderful editors. I have a wonderful staff. I could never do it uh, without the help of all of these people. You know, actually, it's interesting because I have met some of your staff, and you're absolutely correct. I, I'm very, very impressed. Uh, I was at a press conference recently and met uh, other members who work in various different parts of the magazine that you won't necessarily see all the time uh, mm -hmm. um, in the everyday for the public. But the magazine has really created something special, but it still is Francis Lear. Now, when you started, we're in these beautiful offices now. Um, on Park Avenue, and I understand you're even going to be moving to, to bigger and better offices. You started in, in your home at the Ritz Tower. You had people come in there every day. Now, you, when, you have, when you work at home, because I, I do that sometimes too, you never get away from your work. Was that a problem? The first year, I never ever got away from work. I thought I would die at the end of it. Uh, I worked every day, and I worked very, very long hours, and I worried the rest of the time. It was a tough year, but it was a thrilling year. I was creating a product which uh, mattered to me. You know, I really care about my reader. I want to give her things which are important to her and useful to her. And even inspirational. <laughs> <laughs> okay. True. Okay. You know, it, when, when, when you first, Lear's created excitement even before it was on the newsstands. I mean, I was aware of it before it came out, and I'm a charter subscriber of Lear's. But there was an advertisement. There were several. Actually, it was a wonderful group of advertisements of wonderful women over 40 who looked terrific, who weren't lying about their age, who were saying, hey, this is how old I am, and I'm proud of it. One of the ads, uh, which actually featured Mary Weir, who was your first cover person, um, the, actually the photo we're showing now, that ad was banned from the New York Times. I mean, how did you feel about that? Was that kind of, why did they do that? We think because of her age, because there are people in the New York Times who are young and quite bare. <clears throat> It was very difficult, you know, to begin to present an image to uh, the media, to advertising agencies, to, to clients um, of a woman over 40 who was acceptable, you know. Uh, Chena Machado, my fashion and beauty director, and I worked very, very hard to find just exactly the right image. The moment we did, everybody's attitude towards women over 40 changed. Oh, well, look at this woman. She's very attractive. She's sexy. She's intelligent. You know, I'd like to go out with her, and I'd like her to buy my product. 
Okay, actually, you know, it was a very interesting way of, of, of showing it, but you feel which is that the New York Times would have perhaps put that photo in if somebody was younger? You yes, think I think so. I think so. I think it was just too tough uh, to, to accept so quickly the fact that we were presenting uh, the essence of women over 40, which is really what that ad is about. It's not about a woman holding her hands over her breasts. It's about the essence of women at that time of life. Okay, there's a woman at this time of life uh, who is now the most recent cover girl, I shouldn't say the most recent, but on, on the first anniversary issue of Lear's. There is Frances Lear on the cover. I mean, very, very appropriate. I mean, who should be on the cover of Lear's uh, for the first anniversary? But you, but how did you decide to do that? Was well, my editors to... decided. Uh, they thought it would be a wonderful idea. And I must say, uh, I liked the fact that uh, it had never been done before. I liked the irreverence of it, you know. And, uh, and I had a sense that my, my readers would like it, that they would find something in that move, you know, to connect to. Yeah, and, and I think they do, because they need to connect to Francis Lear, and they're connecting to Francis Lear on the cover. I connect to you in another way. Actually, your lunch column, because that's you, and that's very personal. And uh, I feel like I'm sitting and having lunch with you. Who decides who you have lunch with? Do you decide? Yes, for the most part. And of course, uh, other people make suggestions. Uh, but I love my lunch column. It's, uh, it's my indulgence. It's my fun. Uh, and I can go anywhere I want. <clears throat> I, last week, I did uh, two interviews with such divergent people as Jane Goodall and Rob Reiner, you know, the director and, the, and a, a woman who began the study of apes. So uh, it, it's just simply a way to meet wonderful people and to bring them to, the, to my reader. You know, I get to know a little bit about Francis Lear also, not only about the person you're having lunch with. In your column with um, Adam Smith, you talked about the fact that you have trouble managing money, that you have a lot of money to, man to manage. I mean, there are millions of dollars in just this magazine. Is it easier for you to manage money now? Um, I think I told him that it was difficult for me to find people to help me manage money. Uh, nobody can, uh, uh, with a company and so on, can do it all themselves. You need help. And it's very difficult for women to find money managers because those names are exchanged by men. And I, when I first came to New York, I would sit down at dinner parties and turn to the man on my right and say, uh, where do you put your money and who manages it for you? And finally, I found a good name. <laughs> and doing a good job. I have to, I, the time is going so fast, but I have one, one more question that I have to ask you, because you asked it uh, of one of your recent lunch guests. And that was on a scale of 1 to 10. How happy are you today? Well, at times, I'm 30. And at times, I'm uh, uh, four or five. I think uh, uh, no one is on a scale level all the time. And uh, uh, the, the fact that I am able to feel the freedom that I feel with the happiness is what makes it so wonderful. Well, you've made me happy in having a chance not only to read the magazine, but to get to know the woman behind the magazine, Frances Lear. And I thank you for having us here and for sharing some time with us. Thank you very much. We're speaking with Francis Lear, but please stay there because I'll be right back after these messages. I'm Arlene Herson, and I hope that you enjoyed the time that we spent here with Frances Lear in her office in New York City. It's really an incredible magazine, and as I said before, she's really an outstanding woman. If you haven't read the magazine, I really recommend that you do, whether you're a man or a woman. Actually, there are men featured in the magazine as well. But it's for the women over 40, the women who weren't, weren't born yesterday, but even if you're under 40, someday you're going to be over 40. So this is a new concept, a new idea. And uh, I hope that you have enjoyed the time that we have spent here with Francis Lear, and I hope that you'll join us next week. Meantime, good night. Hope to see you then.